I recently completed a live virtual boot camp, had about 25 people in it, and a lot of the people I was working with had were designing strategies and business plans that revolved around automated facilities and remote management. So I thought I'd bring an expert on remote management, Terry Campbell of Copper Self Storage Management, on to talk to you today about remote management. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the On Demand Self Storage Boot Camp. That is a cloud based version of the boot camp like we just did, that you can take at your own pace. You can find out more about it at creating a wealth through self storage.com. But I thought today I would bring a real expert to you to talk about remote management and some of the nuances of it. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Terry Campbell of Copper Self Storage Management. So welcome everyone. This is Terry Campbell of Copper Self Storage Management now and Terry and I've known each other what since about 2015 maybe yeah. 2016 and yeah. uh, done some business together but recently Terry has moved from the lending space into the self storage management space and is um in a new and growing area of our industry, which is uh, automated self storage management. So first question to you, Terry, is why an automated facility over a more traditionally run facility with managers? Well, Mark, uh, first of all, thanks for having me here again. It's good to see you and good to do one of these uh, again with you. It's been it's been great since uh, we started doing these. Um, but to uh, answer the question, the the biggest thing that people are looking at nowadays uh, to you know look at remotely managed versus the, the traditional managers, there's several reasons, but uh, OPEX is one of the big ones. You know, the cost of payroll, obviously, you know, that's typically the second largest expense after your real estate taxes. Uh, so payroll, um, payroll taxes, benefits, things like that are a big savings, which, uh, you know, increase your value, um, give you more NOI, uh, things like that. But another big thing is, um, you know, it's really hard uh, these days to um, get good people. I mean, it's, it's uh, hiring is, um, is just, it's worse than it's ever been trying to find the right person. Um, you know, there are some stats out there now that we see that it's, you know, at least 200% turnover uh, nowadays uh, for a self-storage manager position. So, you know, twice a year, you're putting somebody in there, training them, getting them up to speed. And, and um, you know, having that one person, you're actually kind of depending on that one person for your business. Uh, so, you know, those are a couple of the, the big reasons is, you know, hiring, finding the right people and just the, uh, the savings of OPEX, which can drive up your NOI and your value. Very good. Uh, now, I intuitively th think and not that what I think is necessarily correct, but I intuitively think that um, remote management or automated facilities work well on smaller facilities, but not on larger ones. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, it, that that is uh, most people's intuition, and that's you know that is definitely what people feel like is is the case. Uh, but uh, and, and and you know it w nobody really tried to do the bigger ones for a while, or never tried to do new lease ups for a while. They were like, oh, the, you know, a smaller one or one that's full. Uh, but you know, we had one that was in lease up uh, this summer that we were managing. We did eighty three rentals in three days. You physically can't do that with a manager on site. I mean, that's almost four people per hour. You've got to process eight hours a day without stopping. And it's not going to happen. And people aren't going to stand and wait that long. They're going to get aggravated. Uh, but no, it, uh, it works. What we have found is it works with small ones, big ones. We've managed facilities, probably 100, 125 units, and uh, up to over seven, uh, 800 units. Wow. So it, it, works, wow. it works both ways. It works on... 
uh, acquisitions that have occupancy. It works on ones that are in lease up or brand new. Really? So uh, your your lease up velocity absorption rate, you would uh, you would compete with somebody who has an on site manager and feel you could hold your own or win. Yeah, we sure can because one of, one of the reasons, Mark, or some of the reasons is that it, it actually it's and again it sounds counterintuitive is that we make it more convenient uh, because the, you know you can rent online twenty four hours a day. Uh, if you want, need to talk to somebody, uh, you know, our call centers are open 12 hours a day from eight to eight. Um, and you've got access to, to people uh, or, or methods or, or technology to be able to rent whatever you want. I mean, you know, a lot of facilities that have managers on site, or, you know, they're, they're nine to five. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit more on either side of that. But, you know, typically, if you need to run a unit, you're gonna have to leave work early, or you're going to go at lunch or something like that. And I'll tell you what's really aggravating, because this happened to me, and it's happened to me at one of my own facilities back that, that copper we don't manage, is that I've shown up twice at a facility I'm a partner in, and the manager's not there. So if I were to leave, you know, work early and go to run a unit, and they're not there, here's a sign that says manager will be back in an hour, whatever. Okay, our, like I said, it makes it much more accessible to and, and convenient to rent than, uh, in many cases, actually somebody on site. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I've noticed your company doesn't really make use of kiosks quite a bit. You, you know, uh, years ago when kiosks came out, that was, you know, that was the, the big thing. It was that was the hot thing. These days, everybody has a kiosk in their pocket. Um, you know, you when you you can rent online, you can rent on your computer, you can rent on your your iPad, you can rent on your cell phone. You know, and if we, you know, if someone comes up to our site, they don't really if they don't realize it's uh, it's remotely managed, and they don't find us online, or they don't you know call our call center, uh, and they get there. Uh, we've got signs up everywhere giving instructions. There's a QR code. You just zap that QR code. And unlike a kiosk, I mean, some people still use kiosk and, you know, they have their place. But uh, what we have found is that, you know, you, you zap that QR code. It takes you to the website, the renter unit, and it auto populates all your information, your, your name, address, your credit card, everything. It makes it a faster process because, you know, if you're using a kiosk, you're having to enter every bit of that. And also one of the things that we heard during the pandemic was people were like, oh, I don't know who touched this thing last. I'm afraid to touch it. Well, they're not afraid to touch their own phone. So, you know, using that technology, using the phone, using, you know, the ability to e-sign on mobile devices now, it's just, it's changed things and made it so much easier. Got it. So it really can reduce payroll costs. Other costs, if any, might it reduce? Well, I can tell you uh, some of the things that it, um, you can look at this as it can increase income or reduce costs by the following. When you've got a manager face-to-face -face in person, when somebody comes in with a, you know, a sad story that, hey, I can't pay all my rent this month, or I'm late, I don't want to pay my late fees, or no, I don't want to get your tenant insurance, it's much easier for them to waive those fees or, or to bypass those things. And it's not as easy. Uh, it, I mean, it just doesn't happen when you're when you're remote because if somebody's standing in Good front point. of you face to face. It's a whole lot easier for for you to to give in to them. Uh, you know, we get more people on auto pay uh, this way. And one thing, and and I don't want to make it sound like every self storage manager out there is a thief. But you know as well as I do, you've been in the little business a long time. There's been a lot of theft that's occurred. Managers get very creative on how to, you know, to put money in their pockets. So you're doing away with these things. These things can't happen anymore. What, uh, and we'll get into your company in specific, but what would the life of a owner be like if they used your services or someone like your services? Mm -hmm. So I've got a, in fact, we're doing a deal. One of the reasons I'm doing this deal is I've never done remote uh, management. And I'm interested in doing it simply so I can talk a little more intelligently about it. So I'm, I'm, we've got a piece of property under contract. It's probably 10,000 feet. We hope to be adding about another 10. 
and uh, we our intention at this point is to turn it over to you. Um, what would my life as an owner be like, and what would kind of my experience be interacting with you or a company like you, but specifically you or your well, company? It should be pretty pretty good for you because you know, we're pretty much we handle everything. We handle um, obviously the rentals. Uh, we have our own call center, so we're handling the calls. <coughs> Excuse me. We're handling the maintenance issues. We actually hire what we call a boots on the ground person. They're, they're a 1099 contractor that we have in that market that handles things for us. Uh, you know, like just regular light maintenance. They get the units ready to rent. They put locks in the units. So when somebody moves in, they've got the lock to use. Um, and whenever it's that time of the month that, you know, if, you know, whatever day it is that you consider somebody late, then they go out the next day, do their normal normal procedures that they do, but they also put on uh, the overlocks. So we use the DaVinci lock system, which works really great for this you know type of management. So uh, they go out, they put on uh, the locks, um, you know, the end of the information into the app on their phone goes up into the system, uh, into the software. When it's that time of the month uh, to cut locks and have auctions, they go cut the lock. And uh, we do the online auction. They take the pictures. They upload everything into that. Uh, we handle uh, the rental. Uh, I mean, sorry, the uh, the lien process. We handle the auction process. Um, we handle revenue management, tenant insurance, uh, the whole nine yards. We, you know, we get everybody signed up, and then we do insurance audits every so often to make sure that you know everybody that's supposed to be uh, having tenant insurance that that they do. So. We kind of handle everything from A to Z. Uh, the, the 1099 contractor uh, is your responsibility to pay uh, unless you have us do your bookkeeping. We offer a basic bookkeeping as an option. And then obviously, if we're doing that, then we're going to pay that for you. So um, we can make it relatively painless uh, for you. What type of revenue, with that, you don't have to go into a lot of detail, but what type of revenue management are we talking about? Well, we, we use different softwares. We use StoreTrack. We have we have a team. That's all they do is they review what's going on uh, in your market uh, and in your facility and in your market. You know, when you reach a, a certain unit size, reaches a certain occupancy, if it's if it drops to a certain occupancy, then we can uh, put in, in some uh, some discounts or some sort of incentives in place. Uh, to bring those back up, if you know if street rates up, you know we're gonna we're gonna raise them. Uh, our goal is to make you as much money as possible, so we're gonna push rates and push rates till we see we need to stop. Uh, but we're gonna pay attention to the unit sizes, to the market. You and again using store track, we use that. You know which scrapes the websites multiple times daily, so that we've got the most up to date information. And and for those that aren't on the web that can't be scraped, then you know we actually are calling and finding out what uh, what's going on there so we can make uh, appropriate adjustments. I mean, we're, you know, we're not like the big REITs and have the special, you know, high priced uh, low, uh, outer rhythms that have been built. But, uh, you know, we use it like this and it, it works pretty good. Now, my intuition tells me right, correctly or incorrectly that, uh, if um, remote management or automated facility, that online marketing has got to be a critical piece. Can you talk to us about what your online marketing program might look like? Sure. We handle that for you. We handle the website. We handle the SEO. We handle the digital marketing, uh, the company that we use. Uh, we actually, you know, we use Go Local as the name of the company. So we had a master website built. So everything that goes under that master website, it's going to help us with the SEOs. It's going to help get better placement uh, of, of, of each facility because it's under that master website. They also will come back and, you know, for each facility in each market, they're going to look at what's going on and they're going to give you a recommendation for if you if they feel you need pay-per-click. Uh, if you need pay-per-click, they're going to tell you how much they recommend that you spend uh, per month in pay-per-click for your market for that situation. We also have the aggregators, you know, that like everybody else does, that we'll implement for you. Uh, we can do some um, you know, local stuff, you know, to a degree with you. 
uh, that we can have, you know, extra signage or things like that and have the boots on the ground person go out and, you know, install it by the road, maybe at some, you know, special roadside flags or whatever. Uh, but we do uh, get pretty involved in, in the digital marking and, and also some, you know, at the location. So, so you're, you're able to literally <laughs> tell me how much would be based on a location of what's going on in that sub market or that trade area how much I should be spending on pay-per-click and yep. good. And then I can make a decision to do that or not. Right. Cause I, I mean, I've, I've worked with people who literally have outperformed REITs in, in big markets simply cause they know how to work with and manipulate their ads and be constantly a B testing. And yeah. I'm, and, and, okay, and I'm interested. And we're constantly, you know, talking with the company on how to do things uh, better. And they also, what we we do is for our customers uh, every so often, I I can't remember if it's weekly or biweekly or monthly or whatever it is, but uh, they will actually have a town hall meeting that all of our owners that we manage for can attend and ask questions live. They'll go over information, suggestions, ideas, you know, what they're doing. And also you can ask questions uh, live at those events, just like a town hall. Great, great, interesting. And I don't want to propose that I know a lot about your, the company you went with, but what I think is unique is that you have a flat rate as opposed to just a percentage of income, but you also can participate to some degree in the upside you create. Could you talk a little bit about how your the management pricing for a particular sure. owner? Sure. Yeah. No, we, we do, it is a flat rate based on the number of units. Uh, that's, that's the way it works. And, uh, you know, we have a setup fee up front, but then it's based on the number of units. And also, as you manage that sort of a revenue share, once we increase your uh, top line, let's say it's an acquisition and we increase your top line by 10%, then we're going to get 1% of that revenue. So, um, you know, I I had had several customers when I came on board say, you know, say, Hey, the flat rate's great, but what's your incentive to increase my revenue? And I'm like, well, you know, that's a good question. You know, other than our reputation being on the line, which is very important to us. And that's a very good question. And, um, uh, you know, let's do something about that. So we came up with that, uh, what we call a success fee. If we get you up past, you know, 10% increase from the time we take over, then we share in uh, the, the total revenue amount, which is, you know, when you look at the numbers, it's very fair. Um, so that, and the other thing is that for some reason it were to drop below that baseline where we started, we don't, we don't get that fee anymore. So, um, that's, that's kind of how it works. You know, the, the setup fee and then the monthly fee and then a, a, a success fee, depending on the performance. And how would that work? The revenue share work on, you know, lease up situation. Let's say you, I'm you beat me to bringing 40,000 feet onto the market. You beat me to it. So what happens if it's a lease up situation, once we get you past 60%, uh, that's when, because we see that 60 to 65% is normally break even. So once we get you past that amount uh, of physical occupancy, that's when we will you know, participate in the success fee. And also with uh, the tenant insurance, we share, um, you know, whatever the amount is that uh, the, the, the amount that's brought in, the owner gets 50% of that. We get a small amount for handling it and uh, for uh, auditing it. But as the, as the owner, you get 50%. 50% of what? The, the, tenant, uh, in, the tenant insurance, um, the actual the, rate that's paid by the, the tenant. Okay. So if it's $10 a unit a month, the owner gets five and you all would... Take your, okay, good. And do you, in most of the facilities you manage, is tenant insurance mandatory or do the, does the owner decide that or how does that work? Well, we, unless the owner is just adamant about it, uh, we're going to require it because, uh, you know, good. we want that layer of protection and and it's a revenue stream, obviously. It's a revenue stream, but did, I told the people in the boot camp I was in last week, uh, There's very few win-wins in life, in my opinion, but tenant insurance is one of them. That's right. Because everybody comes out ahead on that one. That's right. Uh, And and the the customer would not have to like have their homeowner's insurance go up for 
five years because they made a claim at their storage unit. Yeah, and their and their deductible is typically going to be a lot more than what it would be just to buy the tenant insurance. Yeah. What question am I not asking, Terry, that you think would be important for somebody considering uh, remote management or automated facilities I'm not asking? I think we've covered uh, most of the questions that we normally get. Um, really? I, I mean, I, I honestly can't think of anything else, but I'll I tell you, it it just, you know, it works. And, and um, just if you don't mind, you know, a, a quick couple of minute background here, you know, we developed, we were buying our own facilities and building our own portfolio and we didn't want to have managers. So, you know, it was like, how do we do that? So the model was built like that. And um, it, it was, you know, trial and error and, and different iterations of it. And then during the pandemic, people were seeing that, okay, it's contactless. Uh, you know, their managers were quitting or their managers didn't want to go to work or they didn't want to get near anybody. So people were like, hey, can you do that for us? It's like, sure. So what was going on is um, what was, you know, started out to be a, a management you know, model for our portfolio turned out to be a third party management company and, and more and more people, it just started, you know, picking up steam. And um, so, you know, they started offering it, Hey, we're going to do this as third party. And um, it just kept growing and growing. And then uh, for me, you know, at the first of the year, obviously, you know, Bob uh, Copper, uh, you know, we were partners in facilities. We've known each other a long time. And he came to me and he said, hey, you know, um, we've been building this plane as we've been flying it, and it's really turning in something. We need to make it legitimate. We need to put some structure in place and we need to, you know, make a real, real business out of it. So, um, I came on board in April. We were managing, uh, they, or they, they were, they were operating 91, uh, I think it was 91 facilities today. We're somewhere between 150 and 160 that we're under management or under contract to bring on before the end of the year. I think we may end up with 160 by the end of the year altogether, but uh, that just shows you what, you know, the interest in this model and how it's allowing people to buy facilities that are smaller, that might not normally be, um, you, you might not be able to do it with traditional type uh, management, just because the uh, the OPEX. Um, and, you know, it's increasing value. And it's just, I mean, it's been um it's really taken off and we continue to grow it. We continue to, to uh, do things to make it better. And uh, just, uh, just give you an example, you know, some of our facilities, one of the facilities in particular that we had, uh, luckily for me, I had a good bit of equity in it is uh, when we sold our portfolio back at the end of March, we had 1.375 was what we had in it. We went in, we did all these changes. We you know, put, brought, brought the rates where they belong, put in tenant insurance, got rid of, rid of delinquencies, uh, removed the cost of the manager and payroll and benefits and taxes and all of that. And um, in 18 months, it appraised for 4.2 and sold it for pretty close Good. to that. So, Congratulations. Thanks. So, and, and we had several that were very close to that. That was our best one, but um, just using you know that model, reducing OPEX and you know there's sometimes there's cases where sometimes you you have a facility or buy a facility in a market that's getting close to being tapped out on as far as increases that you can do well the next thing you got to do is lower your OPEX and this is a you know a, a big way to potentially do it for anyone watching this just so you know uh I reached out to Terry yesterday <laughs> and Terry got on with us today, and I think it says a lot about uh, Terry, and I think it says a lot about the company he works for. How's the move been for you? And um, I'm sure it's been a big change going from one part of the storage world into a totally new part. That well, wasn't totally new. You were using them and had a relationship. But personally for you, how has the uh, switch been for you? It's been interesting. Uh, it's been fun, uh, you know, going from, you know, because for 20 years I was a building supplier and then seven years at the bank. And this kind of rounds out my self-storage industry knowledge, you know, the operation side. And, and uh, you know, dealing with self-storage owners uh, through the building process or, you know, through the, the lending process is different than dealing with the tenants that are leasing a unit. I mean, we had uh, one recently that, um, they showed up 
uh, drove four hours in the rain, showed up, there was a lock on the unit. Well, what had happened, they rented unit CC-128. Somebody else, like the day before, rented unit C-28. And um, the, the, the the other people, rent, you know, went into the wrong unit, locked it, didn't didn't rent their proper or, or go to their proper unit. So this guy shows up, he's, he's, you know, rightfully mad, but he's not willing to listen. He's mad. He's got a crowbar trying to get the lock off. I mean, we can see him on the camera, on the recording. Uh, but he ends up cutting the lock, opening the door, throwing all the people's stuff out in the rain, in the driveway, and then putting his stuff in and locking it. So, uh, you know, it took us just a little while to figure out what had happened. And we kept, kept trying to get him to, you know, calm down. Let's let's figure out what's happened here. And he's like, I'm not renting this truck for another day. This is my, you know, he was just fit to be tied. So we contacted the person who owned the other unit or was supposed to be in the other unit that was in his unit and told him what happened. And, um, you know, they're shocked as we were, but then they're mad. They're mad at us. Well, you guys did something wrong. Or something. Well, no, 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 no. You had your information. There's your email. There's your text. It told you what unit you just went in the wrong unit. And there's signs up everywhere to show what units are. So they went in the wrong unit. And uh, we said, we've already talked to the attorney and the sheriff. And they say, this is a civil issue between the two of you. We're not in the middle of it. So going from dealing with, you know, owners of facilities and people getting loans to the actual end user has been an experience. Yeah, I'm sure it has. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can uh, learn a lot about yourself and a lot about people being involved in self-storage operations. Sure can, sure can. But it's been interesting. It's been good. It's been fun. And you know, we, we've got a big goal that we're reaching for. I think we'll make it, you know, to have grown, you know, by um, 70 facilities, um, you know, since April, by the end of this year. That's but, amazing. You've done, um, you've done quite a job. That's, that's a lot. Uh, and we've I'm got sure several, you have a lot to do with that. Yeah. And we, well, we've got, and we've got several folks that, you know, are just continue to add and buy more facilities because they can, and this model works. And so our portfolio gets bigger from these folks buying, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten at a time. Mm -hmm. Well, in my little world, uh, when you move to where you are right now, that just like informed me that uh, remote management and automated running of facilities is uh, a valid way to go. And I think it says a lot about the company you're working for that they would hire you. So um, I have a lot of respect for you and I look forward to our ongoing relationship and working with you for the on behalf of anyone who's watching this and learning from it and maybe even reaching out to you i want to thank you and if somebody's viewing this or listening to this on a podcast terry and they want to get in touch with you what's the best way probably just send me an email terry t-e-r-r-y at copper sm for copper storage management.com uh, that's probably the best way to do it, or just search us uh, Copper Storage Management, and you'll find our website. That's that's probably the the best way to do it. But but thanks again, Mark. You know for having me. You know this was a uh, I, I don't make I don't take a change like this lightly, and I just saw it as a really big opportunity. And you know some people say this is the future. No, it's the present. This is the way. This is the present. It's not future anymore. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks, Terry. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Glad to do it. Thanks. <laughs>